This week on the Road to Independence, we have the privilege of learning about the struggle through the eyes of the first Republican president, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, and other freedom fighters that sacrificed their lives in order for our country to attain its independence today. The initial struggle to achieve independence of northern Rhodesia set off a parallel rise in African nationalism. The adverse conditions facing the indigenous population under colonial rule fueled the liberation movement. This movement saw names like Harry Mwangankumbula, Kenneth Kaunda and Simon Mwansa Kapwepwe at the helm of the political movement in northern Rhodesia. There is much significance as uh, regards this place over mission. First and foremost, it's a place that can be talked about when we talk of uh, the uh, liberation of this country. I am now sitting on a foundation of what used to be the house where Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, the first president of our country, Zambia, was born. He was born and bred here and then later came and worked for the mission. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda joined politics inspired by Harry Mwangankumbula's ANC from Luwa Mission. At the peak of his career, he vowed to lead our country to independence and led the liberation movement along with a number of other freedom fighters. Dr. Kaunda, something must have led you into joining the struggle for the independence of our country. What moved you into joining this struggle? Racial discrimination was terrible, very terrible. Hospitals for whites and some poor hospitals for blacks. Schools for white boys, white girls, and the whole northern Indonesia, there was only one, only one secondary school called Minari. Otherwise, the rest were white people, Indians, hospitals, same thing, everything in division. I remember one day when I was a teacher at Mfurira. I went to challenge them, these white owners of shops. Went to a shop, got some money, told this owner of the shop, from because we're not, we're not allowed to go through doors, we had to buy through pigeon holes, pigeon holes, every shop, pigeon holes for blacks, white going through front doors, front doors. So I went there, I said, I want to buy, to buy that bicycle, please, from the pigeon pigeonhole. And the owner said, oh, oh yes, I paid. Then he said, come around and get quality your bicycle. I said, no, 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 I paid through the pigeonhole. I want my bicycle to come out to me through this pigeonhole. And he, he was surprised. <laughs> I said, pigeonhole, here. I want my bicycle to the pigeon hole. Then, what's trouble? Such experiences of racial discrimination narrated by Dr. Kenneth Kaunda motivated other freedom fighters into joining the liberation movement. It was one evening when uh, four, four of us who were personal friends and so forth, colleagues, decided to go and have dinner. And uh, we, we, do, we dressed up very well for dinner, black suits and, and ties and so forth, and d d drove into the Ndola Central Street, went to a, a beautiful restaurant, which was really serving very, very, very good meals. It was all, all Europeans. So we entered in, in that restaurant in the evening, and we went and sat on the table. And then you could hear the mamas from from the European diners around. But then the owner of the restaurant came and said, well, un 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 unfortunately, I cannot serve you a meal. I do not allow Africans here, so will you please leave? And we said, no, 
we have got the money, we are, we are properly dressed for the, what is the, is the problem? He said, please, I'm asking you to leave. And then the European diners who were, stood up and wanted, nearly came to come and help him, and we told them that uh, any move by you people will just turn this restaurant into a battlefield. So we advise you just, we just want to have our meals, and then they phoned the police, and then a few minutes later on, the, the police, uh, white police chiefs, walked into that restaurant. I went to lay a number now and me wandi mu mbuchari. The yari nefe to lay ingila. Na mono mwa na na maya lefu mo kum umusungu. Aleisa. She posted a kona ina mano and rekon kafe wa wana. Kwisa umfafi. Eh! Iwe, fuma, fuma. Get out, get out. Ela number nat. Fishi fe nachita. Pandu na ina kachu sungu minkeshiwa. But what have I done? And I saw that. Don't you know that African women you smell? Kwele na aliminine. Champeshe amano. No mbaba lumevandilo wa mfwile. Wa funduka. Chia kutila masekelo. Yeloko. Inama shinesho na wa shipasa ula. Neshipo nini. Hai wa tuitia na waka pokola. I said to Kata. We began to think of uh, what was right or what was wrong. At the time of um, deciding how we were going to fight colonialism, we were influenced by Mahatma Gandhi. He had taught us that if you are fighting British colonialism, you can fight in a non-violent way. But if you are fighting these other colonial powers, you have no choice but to use the gun, use the gun, weapon. My colleagues and I thought this was a very good point. And we decided we're going to use his method of non-violence. Talking about specifically about Cha Cha Cha, Cha 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 was launched uh, in 1961 as uh, a program of active resistance against uh, colonial rule. It was a departure from the passive resistance which had been followed all along based on Kaonda's belief you know, that we should wage uh, uh, a struggle, uh, a non-violent struggle against colonial rule. There were feelings within UNIP that this policy was not getting us anywhere and that we had to pursue uh, a much more militant uh, policy, uh, a, a more confrontational policy uh, towards colonial rule and that is how Chachacha was eventually launched in 1961 to send a signal to the British government in Whitehall that uh, the black people of this country could no longer tolerate the Federation of Rhodesia and Yasan, that they could no longer tolerate continued colonial rule because it was also evident that there were a number of other African countries like Ghana, and, uh, Nigeria, uh, Tanzania, um, Mali, Guinea, uh, where independence was being granted uh, to colonial peoples by their colonial masters. And we didn't see ourselves any, any different. But because of the reluctance of the British government to come up with a clear roadmap which would uh, show us that we were going to move towards independence, we decided that uh, that was the best form of action. It involved, of course, having to destroy bridges, having to destroy other vital installations as part of the resistance to colonial rule. And unfortunately, uh, it also led to a loss of life, as uh, uh, evidenced by the death of uh, Lillian Burton in, in Dollar, you know, who was uh, burnt in, in a car by a number of uh, uh, colleagues who were with us uh, in, in, in UNIP and who were subsequently arrested and, and, and executed for, for, for her murder. 
Lillian Burton was a housewife who used to live in this house that you're seeing in the background here in Kaniki area. On that day, Lillian Burton left this house with two of her kids in her car, not knowing how her day would end. Our crew took a drive to the Ndola Mufulira Road where the Lillian Burton incident happened. This is the exact location where the Lillian Burton incident took place. She was driving along the Mufulira Ndola Road when she met a group of agitated Africans whose rally had been violently disrupted by the colonial military. It is said during that rally, discontent with the mistreatment of Africans, a nationalist by the name Munukayumbwa Sipalo taught the Africans to kill anything white on two legs. And that message went straight into the ears of the um, party cadres. And as a result, when a white woman was coming after the meeting from Mufrila, coming back to Ndola, her name was Lillian Burton, we were afraid of that. They had to stop her car. As Lillian Burton arrived at this point, this angry mob that was coming from Chifubu stopped this defenseless woman and dragged her two children out of the car. They shattered her windscreen, poured petrol on the vehicle, and set it ablaze. Lillian Burton died um, I would say very unfortunate because she was fo uh, caught in that web of you know people are running away. Chisanga, that was a terrible mistake, a terrible thing to do for our people. They were very wrong. We never thought of using methods like this against, especially innocent people like that. So we're very sorry, very sad. And uh, it happened. What could you do? We apologized to the Burton family. But what, is, what else could we do? And she couldn't go on. Never twice she left for Kaila Mashu. Then I'm my young girl. Ali no much in Shingata tough with you. To Alec on Kefundi. Bali to ever the Kuriva Kaundo Kutilabane. Therefore, I want to go to Lel Wisha. Mukabo want to go over the local Sumio Molopa. The Lillian Burton uh, issue uh, has not really been put in a proper context before. Uh, what had actually happened was that uh, Lillian Burton, uh, who were children in Haka, had been told to leave the car together with her children so that they could burn the car as a symbol of opposition to white dominance and white colonial rule. Unfortunately, she became very abusive and she became very rude and she said a few unmentionables to the people who had asked her, Chris Ngebe and the others who were involved in this operation. And, and at that point, they departed from the script which had been given to them and they, uh, she was caught up and eventually bent in her own car but the interesting thing is that the children were actually removed from the car they were not part of that inferno that followed you know at that particular time this is what remains of the car that miss lillian burton was driving on that day when she met a mob of agitated africans in indola on the mufulira indola road now what we have here is one of the personal effects that belonged to Miss Lillian Burton. This vanity case was one of the exhibits that was used during the time that the Lillian Burton murder was taken to the High Court of Undola. We are now at the home of one of the gallant freedom fighters that fought for the independence of our country, Zambia, Simon Mwansaka Pwepwe. 
the second vice president of our country and one of the men that led our country to independence. Ilo tuli kukitwe mu 1948. Bale kumana vonsi na wambi kusita alwani kana wako nkola na wani na wani. Nga wabo mbaba mwombe mirimo elo wako manobu shikukuri ya kwini. Bala tampo kuenda uka muma provinsi filafini wale chita mamiti kumba ala wave ikata Baya waka kila kuu kubwa na mkubwa Bafu mako kubwa na mkubwa Bafu wala kabidi wae ingiro mamu ine Kayatila tatumu ene fishi inka mila ndu yu mumu pingu ili oyu Musha mtu kuti alikunu maa ngandeli aishi wa uli uko atina panga miti nyare so safi ya kuti Mwave pafi Akwe ya mwandi wawa chita kuiti if you try to get it, who could you like when a quarico? Could you like a quarry, comedide? I know what you were some vide, the lamata toile, taqualeva. Bello, bena, very quitish with your concosidation. Baletinango to chule fee. The satellite avan to vacuo. To cascafe to live for a tuka 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 chin fee to capoke. Nomba chika vipa kofi yenga na afuwa, tatula apuko kuntu nga, jee na chika vipa, tatale samule nja afuwa. Ine nka sangweko kupoko kuntu nga, chichintu, tuwa tendeka. Nga chafi krisi wa tuwa puisha, tuwa poka no kupoka. Na afuwa no kufuwa, awa nshaka nshaka saka manene, na po nka lala nka wafi wa chiru mbanati, na alishire na apuko kuntu nga, chila chintu tuwa leilisha. Right now, we are privileged to visit the final resting place of Simon Mwansa Kapwepwe. He jokingly said, I'm choosing this place so that I can enjoy the view and look at Zambia and the direction that it's going. And I want my wife to be buried next to me. Shilofia, what do you remember your father for? First and foremost, for giving us independence. That, to me, that is the most important achievement that he wanted and we all as a family feel that very privileged that he was able to bring us independence. Secondly, for having named this country Zambia, a lot of people don't, do not know that he actually named this country Zambia. And for having also contributed to the coat of arms, that he actually contributed to that, how the design of the coat of arms would be. So he played a very vital role in this country. I am now at a place where the Great North Road crosses the Kavangama River, 70 kilometers away from Chinsali district. This is where it all began, the cha-cha-cha. During the cha-cha-cha, the Africans had vowed to destroy a number of government buildings, including a bridge that used to exist right in front of me, crossing the Kavangama River. Three of the freedom fighters were killed by the colonial military. We are now going to meet a freedom fighter who is an epitome of political sacrifice, Mr. Jacob Mwila Kapanga. He was here and he survived two gunshots at that time in 1961. <laughs> but at two, they never feel it up a penny, who pay penny cap. Now, I never want the Shirapa, when I see the Chuka, I see the Chuka on Savasili cap, and I never could hear. Can I ever? Can she could have queen, eh? Muniba Mumba Shilka, never, my dear, can she move some gomo, the dogota, 
Eria wetu kila pari ya isa buku mka kila no kumbika mwini montoka Luku ntuwala kuchi nsari, kuma kuchi nsari ni kurubwa hospital in telling the story of the liberation movement and the political sacrifices that were made by our forefathers, we have visited one of the surviving freedom fighters, Mr. Rodwo Mwansabamba, here in Chinsali. I <laughs> Now, in this week's episode, we have seen that the independence of our country, Zambia, did not come on a silver platter. There was bloodshed and lives were lost. We would like to dedicate this episode to the great men and women who united and stood up to fight for the independence of our country, then known as Northern Rhodesia. Hello and thank you so much for joining us once again for today with Zamtel. I am Kalumba Chikonde on the special series, The Road to Independence. In this episode, our field presenter, Patience Chisanga, will tell us about the history of mining in Zambia and the effects on urbanization. So the story is 